It is quite clear today that labor issues, which have been relatively dormant for many years, are coming back in strong style. The modern view on this subject is to treat the New Deal as kind of history, as a fixed point, and my view is it has always been a mistake and that if you're going to re-examine first principles, you have to understand that the situation with respect to labor unions was wrong in 1935 and remains wrong given the huge changes in the way in which labor markets work. So what's the opposition? Well, the first thing is people say you need unions to deal with market failures. Uh, the true situation is that unions were the source of most market failures. Uh, those failures come in two forms. There was strong use of violence in order to shut down non-union facilities. There's a classic illustration of that pattern. There are stories in the New York Times from about 1912 and so forth in which the defense that the union guys give is when we blew up the factory we made sure that there were no workers in it, uh, but it's quite clear that violence was a part of it. And the second form under those circumstances was the difficulty with respect to collective refusals to deal. And a collective refusal to deal means that all people in an industry decide they won't work with a given party. They create a boycott. And this was treated in 1908 in a case called Lowe v. Lola as a per se violation of the antitrust law. The issue was big enough to become one of the two or three major points of contention in the 1912 election. And when Wilson became president, the Clayton Act expressly exempted unions from the antitrust laws. Now this should have been a hint. If you're exempting them from the antitrust laws, it's an acknowledgement that they're creating various kinds of monopoly or cartel arrangements, all of which would otherwise be per se illegal. You then look at the history in a relatively hostile environment to unions between, say, 1900 and 1933, and what you do is you see high levels of improvement in terms of average wages, Life expectancy goes up quite dramatically, increased women participation in the labor forces there, and productivity gains and wage gains seem to track one another about right. Uh, so the progressives, always talking about the dangers of the system, actually never looked at the aggregate data to see whether or not it supported them, and it did not. Once you introduced the union, of course, there was immediately a massive increase in the amount of industrial unrest um, and the strike wave which took place after World War II. Um, when in fact unions with strong bargaining positions essentially threatened to go out on strike consistently and it was such a bad situation that they passed uh, three statutes that were designed to deal with this. One of them was the Administrative Procedure Act, uh, then there was the Labor Management Act, and then third you had the Taft-Hartley Act which did not repeal the National Labor Relations Act but essentially created a few unfair labor practices with respect to unions and more importantly introduced the possibility of right to work laws if adopted by the individual individual states. Uh, unions reached their maximum influence around 1954 at the time of the merger of the AFL-CIO and pretty much since that time they've been in steady decline. There's a lot of disagreements about it. It's not because of any serious changes in the structure of the law. It has to do with the changes in the operation of markets. So if you're looking at what's going on, essentially unions do not do a very good job for their workers, notwithstanding all the advantages that they receive.